Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Agarar and welcome to Let's Araxium, the show where I wave my planet's ID dick around for the entire internet to see. And today we're going to be taking a look into the Jaws of the Ma, an LMG for the Vanu Sovereignty. We're going to go over some tips and tricks on how to best chow down on your enemies with this thing and hopefully give you a better understanding of Rar's feta- I mean, play styles that work well with this gun. There's an absolute buffet of information to take in here, so let's choke down on the stats. But first, this. <laughs> Starting off with a fire rate of Rar actually putting some goddamn effort into his editing for once and a damage model of 167 damage up to 10 meters dropping off to 125 damage at 75 meters with a velocity of 550 meters per second. Sing it with me boys and girls, it's the NC Special, NC Special in my spandex. Next is a reload speed of 3.45 seconds short and 4.6 seconds long with a magazine size of 60 rounds. The reload speed in the grand scheme of things is quite quick by LMG standards but a 60 round magazine is a bit of a constant. Once you get good with your ma, you can comfortably take on two or three guys, but four will always have you feeling a bit nervous. Don't worry though, there's always the vented power core. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, that thing's almost as bad as the boomstick. Taking a look at the recoil and hot damn, Denny's is more consistent than this. Its overall recoil per second is fairly average, but the level of inconsistencies it has are unmatched. Pick any, 600 rounds per minute, 167 damage weapon, the Maw has the highest recoil multiplier out there. The most variations in recoil angle, with variations in kick per shot, which does appear on some weapons like this, but not on the back of all those other traits. It's... Recoil in the Maw is bad. When it comes to my choice of attachments, I think the 1X or the 2X seems to be the way to go with this gun, but sights are a matter of preference. Run the barrel naked and pick your combo. Soft point with the grip, unstable with the grip, or my personal favorite, unstable with the advanced laser sight. So, is this weapon worth your time? Well, we'll find out in a minute, but first, a word from our sponsors. Hello, I'm Igo Rar, filling in for your usual host, Hangman Swing Set, who unfortunately embraced his namesake this morning on his child's Fisher Price playset. Tonight's top stories. The Terran Republic announces its plans to start gassing Vanu soldiers after realizing the Geneva Convention does not apply to transhumanists. A new study shows that 84% of NC soldiers would pull out a Baldal fiend to go fight in a biolab, and Sluts in Spandex magazine find themselves in hot water after a newly leaked document reveals that all of their models are just full body latex suits stuffed with wool. All of that and more coming up later on 420.69 Hassan Radio, the only news station on Araxis. So that brings us to our final question, is this gun worth your time? And the answer is yes, the maw will eat you alive. But for as much as I enjoy using the weapon, I must admit, statistically speaking, by all measures, the maw doesn't look like the best gun. Let me explain. So TLDR, how does the maw work? Well, for starters, the lower jaw holds the tongue, which freely moves as you speak and eat. The upper jaw shapes the floor of the nasal cavity, allowing for normal airflow. For more information, visit furaffinity.net, who were very helpful in providing thousands of pages of information on the maw, though I must say, they all seem to be much different looking than the gun I was issued. If you want to do well with this gun, slap on the unstable ammo, grip it if you want more range, or grab the laser sight if you want what is the best hipfire LMG in the game. No, there is no asterisk to that statement. MSWR lovers can send their complaints to dookiecomplaints at yahoo.com, or if you want to yell at an NC outfit for some strange reason, send your complaints to ncspainbo at gmail.com. Aim for the center of mass and give them the whole nine yards till one of you is eating dirt. As I said before, statistically speaking, the Ma shouldn't exactly be that good of a gun. 
It easily has one of the most unpredictable recoil patterns of any standard infantry weapon out there when compared to weapons with a similar time to kill. When you're taking on the more delicate task of aiming for headshots, the recoil pattern can be quite problematic. Regardless of your experience with the Maw or your general skills in aiming, a 2.15 first shot recoil multiplier, 5 varying degrees of recoil kick angle, and randomized amount of kick per shot leave a lot of room for high rolls and low rolls. And as someone that plays D&D, the idea of my experience with a weapon being down to a dice roll makes me a bit nervous, but just like most things in life, it's not fun if there isn't a little bit of risk involved. Now, much of what I just said is certainly applicable to many automatic weapons in the game. What I'm trying to get across is that the Maw has quite a bit more of it. While it is certainly a tameable beast, if the sweaty tryhard, all headshot, soft point ammo, shitter sticks combo with a large diet coke is your plan for this gun, just know that the balance of effort in versus rage tells out is not quite as rewarding as other guns. But with the sweaty tryhard talk out of the way, now we can move on to the part of the weapon that's actually fun, the unstable ammo. And never ever have I ever before seen a weapon attachment that perfectly sums up Vanu's faction traits all in one. Easy mode. Departing as far as you can from the land where head clicks matter due to its reduced 1.2 headshot multiplier, we find the answer as to why the Maw's recoil is so bad. There is no doubt in my mind that the thick, sticky plasma balls attachment is what this whole weapon is balanced around, and even when your sights are clearly off your target, time and time again, your shots still somehow land. But it's not all sunshine and pain bows. Despite having the biggest balls on the battlefield, it doesn't have the shaft to back it up. And although it can help in situations where your aim's a little bit off, when your aim is on point, it offers nothing but really a disadvantage. Is the only part of your target exposed their head? Well, guess what? Your bullet is probably too big to hit them and will impact the cover in front of them or just fly right over their head. Find a nice tight angle to shoot out of? Well, your bullets are too large to shoot for more than four to five rounds at a time, if at all. Weaving bullets past your friendly Vanu at that one power knife info that for some reason you and only you can see? No dice, only weapons lock. Have to 1v1 a heavy in a fairly equal engagement? Well, headshots are real important there, and in a fight like that, you don't have any. So yeah, that's a problem. When it comes down to it, the only thing the Maw can do that can't be replicated on other LMGs is some amazingly consistent hip fire with the unstable ammo, but that niche alone makes the Maw worth picking up because a quality hip fire LMG is kind of a bit of an oddity on Araxis. So my little piece of advice for anyone wanting to Araxium the Maw is this, embrace it for what it is, easy mode. The unstable ammo makes the Maw one of the most forgiving guns in the game to shoot. Leading targets, hip firing, holding down the trigger way too long, smoking after playing a fatty. The list goes on, it's all made easy. It doesn't matter if you're just nibbling at the leggies underneath a sunderer or moving targets at range. Put your maw on everything that you see and you will be surprised by the rewards that come. Anyways, that's it for this time guys. My name's Igo Rar, and I feel like I forgot to do something in this video. I don't... I don't know what it is though. Oh well. I'll see you next time. Oh, that's right! How does it compare to the Pulsar C? Uh, it doesn't. <laughs>